Today we're going to make this Haunted Mansion 13 hour clock in the free version of HitFilm Express. So let's go ahead and get started. By the way, as usual, all links will be down in the description, including one to Barrett Manor. And if you're using After Effects, definitely check out his tutorial uh, for a very similar clock effect. Uh, now that we got uh, HitFilm Express uh, working here, we're going to come over to the upper left hand corner and click on the new button. And I'm going to make a 1080p project that's a 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second. Again, if you're in Europe, you'd probably be using 25 frames a second. And I'm going to click OK. Now that we got our project loaded up, we need to bring in the items we're going to use. And so let's go over here, make sure you're on the Media tab, and click the Import button. Uh, and I'm going to bring in a few different items here. We have a 13-hour clock. Uh, we also have a sound effect that I've uh, edited in order to ring uh, 13 times, it was originally four times. Uh, and then I've got a couple of uh, hour hands here. I do include a creepy hand and that will be in the uh, zip file and links. Uh, but we're not using that today. Uh, we are just going to go with the basic clock effect. And so we had those selected and so uh, I'm going to hit open. And here we go. Uh, the very first thing I want to do actually is to create a composite shot. And that's where you actually layer effects together in order to uh, build like, up a, like a special effect. And that's kind of what we're doing today. So I'm going to create a composite shot and the button is down here in the lower left hand corner. So just going to click on that. Uh, right now it's set to uh, 1920 by 1080, 30 frames a second. That's all great. However, the duration I'm going to change to 32 seconds. And the reason why is I want the clock to run really fast. And so I'm going to give it about 10 seconds to do that. Uh, and then I have a sound effect that rings a bell 13 times. And I know that's about 22 seconds long. So I've got 10 seconds plus another 22 seconds. Hey, that's 32 seconds. So that's why I'm saying that this composite shot will be exactly 32 seconds long. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll just call this uh, main because it's the uh, one and only composite shot we're gonna make so I'll just click OK on that and now we're ready to go so let's go ahead and bring in the items that we need first of all I'm gonna drag in uh, a 13 hour clock so I'm gonna hold down my left mouse button and it's gonna drag that in now you notice it doesn't fit very well part of us cut off the top and the bottom uh, so what we need to do is we need to resize this in order to fit our 1080p video so I'm gonna make sure my 13 hour clock is selected I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna come up here to transform and I want uh, to fit to frame height right there so now the guy fits into the frame perfectly so we're in good shape there and let's go ahead and bring in our um, minute hands and hour hands. Uh, first of all is the hour hand. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to drag it. I'm going to put it above the clock. So again, we're building layers. So I want the hour hand to be on top of the clock face. And then I'm going to grab the minute hand by holding down my left mouse button. I'm going to drag it in. I'm going to put that above the hour hand. So now they've kind of got them all stacked up here. We also have a sound effect and I'm going to go ahead and I'll drag that in and that is our bell ringing down here. And I'm going to do one thing to the bell ringing sound effect and that is I want to see the waveform. That will help me line it up uh, with the clock. So uh, I'm going to uh, right click and I'm going to go to options and I'm going to select show waveform. And now you can kind of see the bell ringing waveform so we know where it starts uh, to line it up again. Now the clock and the sound effect are not going to change and so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this little lock icon here and we're just going to lock those down so that way I can't accidentally move the clock or, or anything like that. Later on we'll have to move the sound effect but we're just going to leave everything locked for right now while we work on the hands of our clock because that's the most important part of this effect. Now uh, let's see here, the problem with our hands and, uh, is that uh, we rotate them, uh, I think we're going to find a problem. And so let's go ahead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the visibility, clicking that little eye on our hour hand, and we'll just work on our minute hand. I'm going to use that triangle to open up the minute hand, and use the other triangle under transform to open that up. And you notice we have rotation down here, which is really cool. Uh, and so I'm going to move my mouse over the little uh, 0, 0 0.0 there. And I'm going to uh, notice that changes a little double arrows. I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and I'm going to scroll left and right to rotate it. 
Well, you notice it's rotating by the center. It's rotating actually around that little kind of weird square point that's got there, a little point with uh, two little uh, arrows sticking out of it. Uh, and so that's not what we want. We want to uh, change the anchor point so that way it rotates around the base of the dial, which is this big black part down here. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm not rotated. So I'm going to enter zero. Just click in there and you just type in zero and hit enter to make sure my rotation is zero. And now I'm going to adjust the anchor point. And the way you do that, again, you just move your uh, mouse over the numbers here and you can just hold down the left mouse button and just slide them up and down in order to find the right position. And so you can kind of get it up here and you know, you might need to go over a little bit. In fact, I've kind of already done this and I find that uh, these values work out really well here. I'm gonna move it uh, over two pixels and I'm gonna set this to uh, minus 210. And I found that that was pretty good. And the way I, I found that is that, you notice how the, the top of the uh, minute hand pretty much touches the outer edge of the clock there, the black ring that goes around the clock. And if I rotate it again and I get it all the way to the bottom, it's still it's slightly over, but it's still touching the, the edge here. And also to each of the sides looks pretty good. Uh, so I found that this is just pretty close to, to accurate, maybe one pixel off or something, but that's close enough uh, for now. Uh, by the way, since I rotated that around, notice this little uh, other number over here changed. So I'm gonna make sure I get rid of that to start. So we have all zeros in the rotation. If they don't say zero, click on them, type in zeros and hit enter to make sure that they are zeroed out. Now, uh, that's the uh, minute hand. Now uh, I'm going to close that up. And in fact, I'm gonna lock it so I can't make any mistakes. And I'm gonna come down here to the hour hand. I'm use a little triangle to open up, open up the transform. And I am going to set that anchor point again. And I found the anchor point on this one is about 147. Uh, whoops, I'm sorry, that needs to be a minus 147. So I click on that again, delete that, minus 147. Uh, and uh, minus one is pretty close. So minus one, there we go. And so now we've got our hour hand all uh, fixed up there. Uh, and so I can unlock that and turn it off in there. There it sits, and again, if we rotate it around, look, looking pretty good. The uh, hand is actually a little bit wobbly, but that's not the uh, not the position, I don't think. It's just, uh, it's just made that way, basically. The graphic's not perfect. Uh, again, I'm gonna hit zeros in here and make sure all of these are zeroed out on rotation. So that's real important to start. All right, well, now that we futzed around with this, and by the way, you can just type in those numbers directly, uh, minus one, minus 147, and up here we've got uh, 2 and minus 210. Since you're using the same graphics, they could work exactly the same for you as long as you're following along step by step. All right, now it's time to actually do the rotation. Uh, and so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to work on my hour hand first. Uh, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to spin around completely uh, back to the 13 uh, by the end of our 10 seconds. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the little dot next to rotation and you notice how it changes to orange and just set a keyframe right there and then I'm going to move out to 10 seconds now there's a couple of ways you can do that you can grab this little bar and you can drag it along and you notice it has like a little counter there and you now I could try to drag it out to 10 seconds but you know getting it just exactly is kind of hard uh, and, but what you can do instead is just simply come over here and type in the number that you want it to be and so I want it to be exactly 10 seconds and so I'll just hit enter on that and it's moved exactly to the 10 second point so now uh, you might think, well, you might uh, hold down your mouse button here and scroll that thing around or something. No, you don't have to because it actually has a rotation multiplier built into HitFilm Express, which is really cool. Uh, and so I'm going to select that and I'm going to type in here minus one and hit enter. Now, the reason why it's minus one is because if I would have put in one, it would rotate it clockwise around one full circle. Uh, instead, I want uh, counterclockwise because this is a 13 hour haunted mansion clock. So I want minus one on that one. All right, now we're pretty much going to come and do something very similar to the minute hand. And so let me close those up here. So we're going to kind of transform. Make sure you're at the start here. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to select this to set a keyframe because we got to set a keyframe of zero at the start. 
And then it's going to come up here and I'm just going to type in our 10 second mark. Just hit enter. And so we move over there. And now I'm going to do this on our little multiplier here. I am going to type in minus 13 because it needs to go around 13 times in order to get uh, the hand to move all the way to 13. So because it's a 13 hour clock, not a 12 hour clock. And there we go. We have our basic effect actually done. And if I scroll through here and if I hit the, uh, the play button or you can also hit the space bar, uh, here's what it looks like. Oh, I forgot to turn on the visibility of the minute hand. That might be helpful. So let's come back, redo it over here. Again, click on the little eyes. Make, all, make sure all your little eyes are, are open. Uh, and we're going to hit play. And there we go. So it's looking, looking pretty good. Now, of course, I need to adjust the bell. I don't want the bell to ring until uh, it has reached 13 o'clock again. Uh, and so let's go ahead and unlock this guy. Uh, and I am going to uh, go to our 10 second mark. And I'm just going to type that in. Uh, and so you notice that the hands are back to uh, 13 o'clock again. And then I'm just going to grab this guy, select it over here, and I hold down my left mouse button and I just drag it till it just starts there, till the waveform just starts. So I just want the bell to just start when it hits 13. It looks like it's just starting to ramp up right there. So that should be a pretty good effect. So let's roll it back one more time and give it another play. This time I'm going to hit the space bar, by the way. You can hit the little uh, triangle up here for play. But you can also just hit space. That's it, it's gonna ring uh, 13 times. Uh, and so that'll be our final effect, but I wanna do a couple of more things. Uh, first of all, I want to come over here and right next to Minute Hand, I am going to click this little motion blur button and turn that on and I'm gonna do the same thing for the hour hand. Uh, what that's going to do is going to add a bit of blur as they swing around, especially the minute hand is moving pretty fast. And so that's going to kind of blur the video so it doesn't look so crisp and clean as it goes around. Uh, and so that's more what your eye would actually see if it was in the real world. Uh, so that's the, we uh, would definitely return that on to add some realism to the effect. Uh, you know, you could also add drop shadows and things like this to this to, you know, kind of fancy it up, but that's good enough for a basic effect. Uh, and uh, I want to add one more thing though. Uh, we are gonna get fancy today and we're gonna make our own green screen video. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna come up here to new layer. I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna select plane. Now I've already got a green color for green screens picked out, uh, but I'm going to show you what the uh, numbers are here. If you click on this colored patch, no matter what color it might be, it's going to pop up this little box, and this uh, is the numbers you need to enter in. And it's only uh, you only want to adjust the red, green, and blue, and you're going to put in zero. 177 and 64. So again, that's 0, 177 and 64, and, and then just click OK, and that will create that green. And then if we click OK, that's going to create a green background plane. Uh, and of course, it's on top of everything right now, which we don't want. So we just need to drag it down to the bottom. And that's it. We've actually created our own green screen effect. And so at that port, uh, at this point, we're actually done. So we just hit export and then to file. And then we, you know, we would select the, uh, the name of our uh, uh, file that we wanted to save out. Uh, and uh, just uh, I'm going to hit cancel here because I already saved it. But you just click OK and it would export. And of course, again, with exports, always make sure that you go to the export tab and make sure you're happy with the default preset that's exporting out in the resolution that you want. Uh, and that's it. Uh, by the way, the full effect is included at the end of this video. So if you just want to clip off the effect and use it in your own presentation, you certainly can. And if you want to rebuild it from scratch, maybe modify it, maybe didn't like the way I, I did it or something like that, you can certainly make any sort of changes that you want. Certainly hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please like and subscribe and tell your friends about the channel. I do appreciate it. Until, I, uh, until next time, I'll talk to you later.